Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Well, how about the hard-on I got? Is there a statistical correlation for that, too? This is episode 199, recorded Bueller? January 26th, 2022. <laughs> Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore. This podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt and I will tackle another classic or not so classic film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Uh, on this podcast, we start by giving a few basic details of the movie give first impressions, and we go off the rails from there. Joining me tonight <laughs> is Crystal like Cleveland, me. the Living Dead yeah. Girl and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. Crystal, how you doing? I'm great. I'm just watching Ralph's face. It's like, it's so sad when we have a newcomer and they're like, oh, mm, why did I decide to do this? I don't right. know why I'm here. No, Ralph's a pal. Ralph knows how. Ralph well, knows I, I just don't want to interrupt until that's my job at this point. Interrupting yeah. is our None job. None of us though. wait. Yeah, poor Jeff. Oh, you won't find any interruptions here. <laughs> <laughs> also joining us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the Classic Era, and Decades of Horror, the 1970s, which is all of them. That's all. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. How you doing, yeah, Chad? Yeah. I am awesome. And God bless this movie. Yes. And I'm not just good. saying that because Ralph's here. <laughs> I'm... I'm I'm with that. I'm, I'm yeah. And also with us is Bill Mulligan. <laughs> Last but not least, writer, director, and special effects guru, co-host of Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Bill, what's shaking? I, I'm Wait great, a second. When you what call are me those mannequins effects... doing? Are what? your mannequins, what are your mannequins doing back there? What? One's, one's just Wait standing there minding his own business, and the second. other one is flexing like this. Why? On, on his knees? The, one's tickling the mummy. Flexing on his even... knees in front of the other no way is that mannequin. The one on his knees facing. That's what I want. He is to not on his not knees. Us. He's just shorter, and he not doesn't us. have a head. Nothing is possible. <laughs> could possibly Leave it to Crystal <laughs> to find the <laughs> Sorry, sexual I didn't, I didn't see it until just direction. now. All of a sudden, I'm like, wait a second. Tells you what she's focused on anyway. I'm just saying. Ralph, I so apologize. It's gone straight to the gutter since the last time you were here. I mean, oh. just, just. I, 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 I guess also, when, with us. also when joining I, I, us tonight is. Oh, oh, he's Ralph cutting us off. Miller. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Bill. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Ralph Screw Bill. A, uh, Ralph has been on the show a few times before. I, Bill's done. It's, I'm, are you okay, Bill? Is there, oh, I'm fine. How you doing? Okay. Also with us is special guest Ralph Miller. I'm sorry. Uh, Ralph has been with us before when we did Trick or Treat and did kind of an interview show with him. And he's been on a couple of classic era shows as well. And Ralph, tell us a little bit about yourself. Ralph's a, a special effects dude from the 80s. The real guru here. <laughs> okay. Well, I used to work in movie special effects, uh, specifically creature animatronics. I didn't really have a lot to do with appliances or anything of that nature, but when it came to monster puppets, that was my jam, and I was really very lucky to work on some cool movies that people might have heard of, while other people with the same amount of talent as me were probably doing all kinds of like films that you'd never hear of. But I worked on some some lousy movies as well, so I've got that going for me. <laughs> we have to. You, mm -hmm. you in fact played a, your own creature, I think, right? And... Yes, that's right. In the movie or the director video Evil Spawn, directed by Ken. <laughs> nice. <laughs> directed by, I can't believe I forgot his name. Oh, some I guy named Ken. <laughs> Ken. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Ken. Oh, we all know Ken. Yeah, Ken's Olin awesome. Ray, right? What's that? Wasn't it an Olin Ray, uh, Fred Olin Ray production? It was a Fred Olin Ray co-production, yeah, with uh, yeah. Bobby Brzee's husband. They both were the uh, producers of the film. Okay. okay. Oh, my goodness, well, yes. I'll cut that out. People spawn. <laughs> it'll, just, it'll just look like okay. you went. 
in the middle of your sentence. You know? like, like they have Tourette's or something. Yeah. Just... <laughs> but wow. that's all right. Anyhow. No, Fred. Or, uh, Ralph was in. Uh, not Fred. Ralph was in. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Remember at the Gremlins? beginning when you said this was going to go off the rail quick? <laughs> yeah, pretty quickly. Well, this is what happens hey, when I go from I memory to for you. Uh, So Ralph worked on Gremlins, right? I uh, did work on Gremlins, one of many people on yeah. that crew. It's a big crew. Uh, worked on the blob remake from outer space for the Kyoto Brothers. Yeah. 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 And I, this I, one. I, I, and, and, and Dolls as well, right? Mm -hmm. Dolls, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors. Has Which is the time. best oh, one. Yeah. Sorry, it is absolutely still my number one favorite. I don't know. I guess I just like threes, Halloween three, but Nightmare on Elm Street three <laughs> is Halloween the best. Three. Nice, yeah. It, Any one of those would be something you could be proud of, and you did yep. all of them. Yeah. They Let's, were very collaborative, though. So let's make that <laughs> clear. Yeah, we know. Yes, yes. Know. Lots of lots of people working on it. Um, yes. so oh, look at him being all humble mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we. Uh, um, this is episode 199. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Right before episode 200. Which yes. today, at the end of this episode, we will announce the winner of our polls for. Oh, do y'all know who it was? Because I know. The subject yeah. of the 200th episode. I was I surprised. Have no idea. <laughs> we, we know. All right. Our topic tonight is from oh, Beyond. Great picture. 1986. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of Arby's. <laughs> Would you believe yeah. that the two sides of that are. Uh, either side of that are faces, right? Was, was, mm. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there, uh, <laughs> directed by Stuart Gordon. Yay. Uh, quick uh, follow up to Reanimator. Written by Dennis Paoli. Paoli? I'd say Paoli. Pa yeah. Paoli. 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 Okay. Uh, sort of, you know, that like the first three minutes is from the H.P. Lovecraft short story. Um, also, some writing credits to Brian Yuzna and Stuart Gordon. Cast includes Barbara Crampton, Jeffrey Combs, Ted Sorrell, 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 and Ken Shorey. Sure, Sorrell. Sorrell. Filming locations, Empire Studios in Rome. Release date was October 24th, 1986 in the U.S. Budget. Four and a half million estimated, although oh. on some of the extras on the DVD, they said two and a half million. So I I don't know. I mean, mm. Stuart Gordon himself said, well, we only had two and a half million, so we could make it a lot cheaper in Italy. Oh, um, that makes sense. So I don't know. Yeah. Box office, uh, about 1,261,000 in the U.S. And the synopsis, a group of scientists, it's always the scientists, right? Yep. have developed the resonator a machine which allows whoever is within range to see beyond normal perception normal perceptible reality but when the ex experiment succeeds they are immediately attacked by terrible life forms okay that's, that's you think that's they would never turn it on again but they it, turn but yeah. it on repeatedly mm -hmm. so I think, I think invasion of the terrible life forms might have been a better title i was <laughs> thinking all right, I'm going to switch myself here, so uh, only hiding me. And here's the poster oh, that we've all come to mm -hmm. love. Great mm. tagline, too. Yeah, it oh. is. Humans are such easy prey. We are, and we are. We are. Oh, you guys are human? <laughs> no. Let's <laughs> talk about animal from Australia. That, that makes you the human. Uh, chap, chap. No. <laughs> no. No. Why okay, Chad. So we do have two taglines, one of which we've already delivered. Oh. So, oh, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. It was very well done. Very the lead, Chad. Sorry. That's okay. No, that's great. The less I have to do, the better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two. There's only two, which is. To me is a blessing yeah because mm -hmm. some of these taglines that is a good tagline that humans are mm -hmm. such easy prey and the way he delivered it was so was good too mm -hmm. um everything is alive and hungry oh. that also oh. sounds like arby's it does uh, everything uh, is alive that, that should be an arby's tagline sure eh. that one is kind of weird but <laughs> 
<laughs> it's better than a lot we've heard. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, let's let's uh, get into first impressions. And Ralph, if you don't mind, I'm going to leave you to last because fine. You have more knowledge. Uh, and and well, because you know, he had a first impression before yeah. any of us before even saw ever, the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And that and that's a and that's a general statement. You know, you have more knowledge. He yeah, can just saying right there. than the rest through. of us. But, uh, so, Chad, oh this was Chad's pick. Yay. Yeah, yes. good pick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he came through fine. Yeah, when did you first see this, and what are your what are your first impressions? Uh, first time I saw this was a VHS rental, and um, I, I was a big fan of Reanimator and um, you know and Stuart Gordon at the time, and I think I saw this in Fangoria that it was coming coming, and uh, so I rented it. And, and watched it and was just flabbergasted at the at the special effects and, and the gore and the goo and everything like that and just and I had read the I'd read the story a while back and I, I may not remember too much of the finer details of this of the story but it was a little different from the story but it, you, you, in this in this uh, one you got to see Barbara Crampton you know almost naked so. Um, <laughs> As a young man watching this, it, it turned it instantly into one of my favorite movies. Uh, no, seriously though, it's um, this movie I enjoyed so much. It's one of my favorite body horror movies. Um, uh, the Thing, and then From Beyond, as far as body body horror goes, and um, it was just great. It was just great. The actors were great. I love Barbara Crampton in this. Um, just her acting and stuff like that was was really good. Ken Foray, who you know, Dawn of the Dead, say you know, can't say any more about him. That it's, it's, he was awesome, mm-hmm. and uh, Jeffrey Combs. I mean, that's a just a formula for success to me. And um, yeah, I just I love this movie. I love it. And um, and people are gonna think, oh, you're just saying that because Ralph's on the show. But I'm not. It really, it really is. It really is. It, it's a great show, and Ralph's just a bonus because he's here today. Uh, great movie. Um, yeah, it's just the monsters. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything, everything was really good, and it and it kept rolling at a really good pace. Um, it was one one thing after another, and it just kept coming and it kept coming. It's almost like a punch to the gut. Uh, you know, after the first, you know, half hour or so when things get really get rolling. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I love this movie as I still love it today. I don't know if it ever, I don't remember it ever coming out in the theater. I, if it did, I missed, I missed the theater. Uh, usually I'd be the first one to buy a ticket for something like this, but I didn't, but I, mm-hmm. I ended up renting it, renting it and just love it. It's one of my absolute favorite movies. That's why I picked it for Pete's sake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow! So, for Pete's sake. <laughs> and I don't like know who Pete is. A bad movie? What? Oh, like Bill, never please. A bad movie? Bill, on. please. Are you really saying that, Bill? <laughs> you really? Watch some right, of the well, other, watch some of the other podcasts that Bill's on, and when we'll, Planet we'll of the Dinosaurs that. is an unheralded masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I love those dinosaurs. <laughs> Thank you. See, mm-hmm. Ralph agrees. All right. Well, let's let's. Let's go with Bill Mulligan next. When did you first Since see he's this? Since he's anyway. What are your I remember the ads for this on TV, so I know it played in the theaters because I remember that line where the most, mm. you know, humans are such easy prey. It's like, ooh, that's a killer. And I'd already seen Reanimator, but my wife at the time was not a fan of Reanimator. I think she may have come <gasps> around since, but she, yeah, yeah. I, I think it just caught her at a bad time. She just, <laughs> she really hated it. And um, so I had to sneak this one. I'm pretty sure I... I, I watched uh, my first time i watched it was either hbo or more likely blockbuster mm-hmm. and i really liked it of course it has all the things that i really liked practical effects um a great cast barbara Com- comes look great fantastic in that outfit it's crazy um the color scheme i, I mean i i like it i like it and i don't i i love the bright primary colors i'm always you know suspiria creep show i love that that look but looking especially with some of the behind the scenes stuff that Ralph has shared with us. Unfortunately, that, that 
harsh, bright lighting, color lighting really kind of hides some of the beautiful detail in the monsters themselves, which is unfortunate. I, I, I know why they went with it. It's a cool look and everything. It's definitely a nice, unique look. But I, I, I guess all special effects people have that lament that you put all this work into something that's only on the screen for a fraction of a second or so hidden in the shadows with the lighting and everything that you really can't tell all the work that went into it. But um, it's a great movie. I, I, it's, I don't like it as much as Reanimator, but Reanimator is just one of the classics of that time. I mean, it's, it's no shame to come up second to that one. It's neat. It's a, it's a good movie, and I wish, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it did as well as Reanimator, and I, you know, I wish they could have kept on making um, H.P. Lovecraft movies, because they, they seem to really have a way of taking these very short stories, definitely not enough to fill up an hour and a half, and figuring out a way to expand it and uh, make a good movie out of it. So yeah, it's one of my favorites of the time, too. So it was a great pick by Chad, got to admit it was. It was. Why should we? Why are we surprised? Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> Crystal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what did you first see this? So, I was young. I don't remember how old. I'm really bad at that. But uh, I love Jeffrey Combs so much. Mm -hmm. I think y'all know that. And I love Barbara Crampton. And Reanimator is one of my very favorite movies of all time, for sure. Actually. I have like a poster and their autographs around here somewhere, oh, but nice. I should have put it up. Well, yeah, like Jeffrey's awesome. Meeting him was very awesome. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> okay, so um, I uh, I love this movie. I, I I remember as a kid, I just I I always had a thing for Jeffrey. So like, well, and Barbara. And let's be real. Like, I know, I know, like, Bill's like, oh, she looks great. She's, she looks great now. Like, she looks mm -hmm. Yes, she does. Great. She looks exactly the she's, same. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Like, she is. Ageless. Um, she's, she's just so beautiful. And I, she's always mm -hmm. going to be beautiful. And she's always been beautiful. But um, I, uh, I think that's why I saw it. Because, you know, like, when I was a kid, I would just, like, look at the things. And I picked out the movies and my brother would just rent them for me. So, you know, I got the chance to kind of... And if it was like that, it, I will never forget that pulled face thing. Because, obviously, if it looked really weird, then I yeah. wanted it. Mm -hmm. um, this is not as good as Reanimator, I agree, with Bill. But, man, I think the effects are better. I think the creatures are cooler and I love the yeah. body horror where, he, you know, he starts to transition in, you know, like each time you see him, he's more gooey morphed and mm -hmm. yeah. And I just, <laughs> I love, I love that. I think that they did such a great job on that. And so I, I think that in that regard, it's superior. So hmm. for me, that that's yeah. Well, and it's not just because Ralph's here, but really, like the creatures are cool, <laughs> like the like the flying bat thingy, and then I mean, they did have some computer graphic stuff that was like eh, debatable, but um, I also don't like the story as much. But that's only because it's really awkward and weird to see hmm. Barbara and 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 the way she was acting and then all of a sudden he shows her in the mirror and she's like oh yeah it's not me i don't know i wasn't crazy but mm, i'm not crazy yeah. about that but i was happy to see her in the outfit so mm, i'll take it but okay i'm digressing i i love this movie and i still think this movie absolutely holds up and i think that it is i think i think a lot of people haven't seen it shockingly but I think if they did, they'd like it, especially if there's any Reanimator fans. I mean, oh sure, totally, totally, totally. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what Jeff's waiting for. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. what do you want? You want uh, you want me to dance? You want us to dance? Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, and back to you, yeah. Ralph. <laughs> uh, this is where I, this is where I cut. All right, so um, back to the studio. I did, uh, yeah, broadcasting from Eli's underground fortified 
Is that a tramp? Okay, no, it's Dungeon. not a trampoline. Is that a snow um, shovel? Is that a tramp? Is there a tramp there? It does look like a trampoline. See, I can't stop. Oh. I can't. Um, if the background has stuff, I get so distracted. <laughs> I can't yeah. help myself. Kind of a spring-loaded <laughs> chair or something like that. Um, so, I like this a lot too, and I but I don't think I saw it until not that long ago, like maybe a decade ago. Um, I missed. There was a period there in, in the late 80s and 90s where I didn't see much that wasn't at the, I, you know, I saw big name shows at the theater, but the other stuff I wasn't catching near as much. I uh, wasn't going to the video store as much. So uh, this is, but I love this. I absolutely love it. I love the whole uh, uh, sex and violence thing. I, 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 oh, yeah. And it, it actually... He kind of reminds me of Hellraiser. Uh, uh, hmm. Pinhead, yeah, a that little character, bit. You know, the, mm -hmm. not not what he looks like, but the the idea of um, pleasure and pain. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, so anyway, and I love the effects. I absolutely love the effects. And of course, Jeffrey Combs, Barbara mm -hmm. Crampton, and uh, Mr. Sorrell does a great job as this evil character. So, and Ken Foray is. He's a great sort of uh, comic relief in this. All right, Ralph. No, oh, okay. Not you. Okay. <laughs> Wake up. Well, yes, I'm awake. Um, yeah, I I uh, saw this when it came out in the theaters. I saw it on the big screen, but it wasn't there long. So those of you who missed it, not surprised. Just didn't. <clears throat> Didn't have much time at the theaters, and then it was pulled. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I have seen it since, of course, on video, and I've got the unrated director's cut um, on video, and I was recently watching it to, to bring me up to speed so I remember what actually happened. There's a lot that goes on in this movie. It's, it's fascinating to compare the story to the movie because the story is just – a few pages long and this is a yeah. whole movie and boy oh boy what hp lovecraft would think if he saw this movie i have no idea but he would probably be horrified well you know right. he was he was racist so he'd probably be <laughs> he was yeah. he was afraid of sex i mean there was all kinds of yeah. weird things about that man <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i think I think that it it really hit hits a lot of buttons you know it's 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 um Kind of subversive and um, prankish in in the way that Stuart Gordon likes to do things. He's he's not somebody who pulls punches. He takes things and he pushes and he just keeps going. And you're thinking, oh, he's not going to go there. And then he goes past where you're thinking he might possibly go. <laughs> and and that's partly because of he his you know his interactions with the other writers like Brian Usna, who did Society. He's, he's a crazy oh, man. Yeah. In his mind, <laughs> uh, imagination. Um, mm. I I really love the Stuart Gordon way, the way he works with the actors. I think his his choice of actors and, and the way he works with them, you know, the performances I think are really strong. And Barbara Crampton in particular, I think, really stands out in this movie. And in fact, it's it's one of her favorite acting experiences because she just got to do so much. There's so much depth and an arc to her character in this movie. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the creature effects, the monsters, not just because I worked on them either, <laughs> but because I just love the designs and, and the imagination of it. And, you know, it, it really gives you a sense of what those indescribable things that H.P. Uh, Lovecraft was putting into his stories might have looked like, because he's notorious for not really describing them and saying that right. they're so horrible they can't be described. Unimaginable. <laughs> <Exactly>. Unspeakable. <laughs> Unspeakable horrors, yes. Um, so anyway, I was I was delighted with the movie. There are times when I myself was like, man, that scene is gross and gnarly. Did he have to do mm -hmm. that? But it's Stuart. He had to do that. <laughs> and yeah, I recognize it's not as popular a movie. It's not as well known a movie as Reanimator, and but it's a very different kind of movie. Yeah, um, it's it's more my kind of movie than Reanimator is because I'm more of a creature, oh. specifically oh, yeah. creature kind mm -hmm. of person. But mm -hmm. um, you know, both of them are are really remarkable on their own. 
and and together it it just shows you how much Stuart really loved H.P. Lovecraft, but was willing to take him way way outside of, of where the story the original stories would take you. So, mm -hmm. on the whole, I'm happy. I was lucky I got to work on it. It's, it's yeah. a, it was a cool project. There's there's no other movie out there where you can see Ken Foray getting eaten alive by super sugar crisp cereal. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. This is true. I don't know how often you get to see Ken Foray in a Speedo either, for that matter. Yeah. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. And I actually, I remember watching that th only this time and thinking, poor dude. I bet that was so uncomfortable. Like... Just he didn't look like he minded very much. Well, look, well, I mean, it helps that he looks good yes. in it, but right. still, right. when you're as, like, as opposed to a wet T-shirt, it was a uh, methyl cellulose speedo. Speedo, uh, yeah. Speedo. What? <laughs> what? I don't even know. Lime, I'm methyl so cellulose confused. Lime. Well, also, yeah. uh, the studio yeah. they were shooting in it used to belong to Dino De Laurentiis, but Dino didn't pay wow. his taxes, so the Italian government took it over. Took it over. But not only that, but they stripped out the heating system, so there was no oh. heating in this building. Oh, no. oh wow. Can imagine oh. Ken Forey in that outfit shrinkage. in freezing cold oh. warehouse conditions. Did you just say shrinkage? Who said I don't shrinkage? Think, yeah, I I, I'm like, that. I don't think he had to worry about wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I said freezing cold warehouse conditions. Where was the shrinkage? <laughs> I didn't say anything about shrinkage. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Jeff, that was Jeff. Jeff knows. That was Jeff. Freezing cold. Was Jeff. Was, Jeff, oh, Jeff knows. Oh, that was Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I heard it too. I was like. Yeah. No. I. I, I <laughs> Jeff. Well, I, Jeff pays close attention to stuff like that. I knew we I were going to get naughty on this one, so just deal oh, with yeah. it. Yeah. It's hard not to. Well, like, there's a lot. The territory. Mm -hmm. You can't. Well, let's let's take like we're talking about Stuart, Stuart Gordon. Let's uh, throw up some. Other yes, Gordon work. Oh, what I had to oh. put dolls in there twice. Okay, well, I like uh, that. <laughs> I think that, one, that bottom one is supposed one to be right, a reanimator, probably. Oh, uh, oh. yeah, probably. Mm. But yeah, I, we're gonna have to do dolls too. And actually, Ralph worked on that one too, right? Oh. Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I love What's dolls. robot jocks? I've never seen or oh, robot oh, it's jocks. Fun. I've never oh, seen that. A fun movie ahead of Backwards, its time, yeah, before Transformers yeah. became right. And before Pacific Rim, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But David Allen did the fun. David Allen, yeah, it. David, David Allen. Oh man, David Allen. <laughs> well, we have done a. Uh, you've got some some mm. Brian. Uh, oh, Brian, Brian you know, day gone. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I think Return of the Living Dead 3 is underrated, too. I mean, They're it's all perfect, good. But it's got a yep. great performance in it. I mean, so is stuff. Faust. Faust is an mm -hmm. awesome flick. It's based I'll on a comic. I haven't seen Faust. I've got to check what? that out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if it's the anything like the comic, by, uh, it's bloody. It wasn't, as, it wasn't as graphic as the comic, but it, it, oh, it, was, it was really comic. good. Tim Vigil art. Yeah. I have to say, I know that it was a Jeffrey Combs lookalike in Dagon, and how much I love Jeffrey Combs, but I I think Dagon was one of my all time favorite movies as a kid. There was something mm. about it. I think it was so well done, and yeah. like her at the as the octo when she when you find out she's like an octopus, you know, in her wheelchair, <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah, it's so awesome. I don't know. It was well, yeah, was, that was gonna be the the film they made the second film they made, right? But the studio wasn't interested in Fish. Wasn't that the, the producer? Um... Well, when you say that Dagon <laughs> well, is he a said fish he didn't god, he's a fish. fish. The whole fish I wish is... they wouldn't call it a fi him a fish god because right, I think that's right. what ruins it for people. Yeah. They're like fish Fish god. don't sound scary. Until... I, know yeah. I, I know I read that somewhere. Mm -hmm. No, that sounds like something a Hollywood suit would say. Mm -hmm. People don't like fish. Okay. Well, Yuzno, Yuzno was the producer, wasn't he? On yeah. Dagon. Well, one of them, one of them. And uh, and um, and Stuart Gordon directed. It. Stuart Gordon directed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why wasn't Jeffrey Combs in it? Do we know? Because I mean, obviously, clearly, clearly, clearly I'm probably dreaming the dude all this he stuff hired up, was I, very looked very much like Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I, I think he was uh, uh, previously engaged, as I recall. Damn. About that. 
Mm -hmm. I'd be doing some Star Trek or something. Oh, yeah. His, like, million roles in that. Or his yeah, doctor. He's... What was that movie he was in where he was, like, a Doctor Strange rip ripoff? Okay, was see, it? look. Look, see, yeah. see, there he is. Dr. Mordred? See, I love. Yeah, oh. Dr. Dr. yeah Dr. Dr. Mordred, yeah. Which was an awesome <laughs> flick. Mm. We'll get to these eventually. Yeah. And he's a nice guy too. He's. Uh, yeah. I know. That's why I was like, "Look, see, there he is." I love uh, this. Maybe photo. it was Charles Band that didn't. I love you. Didn't think the fish was gonna. <laughs> maybe was that a was you that a full moon him. movie? Yeah. Well, it would have been if it if Charles had. Met. Well, he was the executive producer on this one. So I, don't, I don't know. Somebody. Really? Dagon was supposed to be the next one, and it, it got, it got. Well, Dagon uh, didn't come out till right. way later in the right. Movie. The, right. the partnership of those guys, right? Yeah. Hmm. So we've we've said many things. Uh, mm -hmm. Trumpeting the virtues. Of yes. Yes. Yeah, there's the. I see the virtues. <laughs> hmm. well, I love. I loved how she was able to go from this librarian looking. To, yes. You know, uh, psychologist or whatever she was until and yeah, she that slow transformation was just brilliant right it was just and brilliant. usually usually when they do something like this it's either she's smoking hot and they just put glasses on her and we're supposed to pretend that she's dowdy looking when she totally isn't or she's ordinary looking and they just throw her in some leather and now we're supposed to pretend that she's really hot but mm -hmm. no she's great in both she's roles. she looks it. like a legit mm -hmm. yeah you she, know professional yeah. woman and she looks there you know mm -hmm. it, it just works she's a great so actress she's they, a really uh, good actress when she got that outfit, if you if y'all uh, see, have y'all seen her Jacob's wife? It's on Shutter. Yes, and it's one yeah, he she great. produced it, and she's wonderful in it. This is recent. Oh, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I'm looking forward to that. I understand it's she excellent. has quite a quite a juicy she's role. So she would, good. She actually yeah. produced it because she wanted. She said it was hard for, which I don't understand. Uh -huh. Hard for a woman her age to get roles like this, yeah. and I'm like. She looks easily 20 years younger than what she is. I don't understand. Yeah. People shouldn't go by her age. They should go by what she looks like. She could totally play, but I get it for, you know, I mean, whatever. It's yeah. Hollywood. What but yeah, is. she's phenomenal yeah. in it. But good for her. Good for her to not just mm -hmm. sit around and mope about it. She went out and actually, mm -hmm. you know, did something. Made a movie or something. Mm -hmm. Good for her. So, yeah. Stuart Gordon said the the outfit that she's wearing in the bottom, bottom picture, the leather outfit, mm -hmm. they actually, mm -hmm. he went shopping with her. <laughs> Why do I think that's funny? She tried on like dozens. I mean, like I don't remember the numbers, like sixty or a hundred or something of these outfits. And he said it was the best day of his life. I'm sure, or, yeah. like that, or the most fun he had on that movie or something. Oh yeah. And then they ended up and they worked with somebody and created their own. So. Oh. Oh okay. Yeah, well, it probably gave him a lot of ideas, though. I mean. Yeah, I don't think it was a wasted day. Yeah. No, she said it was fun. Oh, okay. yeah. And she does do and a I just, wide range in this, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I loved say, that bottom. Yeah, it's so yes, good. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. she, and I mean, she's, she's kind of laughing, one of the, too. One of the best. I've seen things so horrible that I'm now driven mad, and I'm yeah. laughing and crying at the same time. I mean, that's a classic H.P. Lovecraft kind of ending, and she she does it better than just about anyone. Well, she yeah. sort of she became, became Crawford at the end. She sort of became... What Crawford was at the beginning of the film, she became yeah. that at, at the end. Yeah, so yeah, just, that was yeah. awesome. That is so. That is so Lovecraft to be driven mad by these revelations right. that mm. that there are things in the world that are so horrible that you had no idea about, and now you're broken. <laughs> of course, her yeah. leg was broken too. Yeah. But but yeah, it was her actually her idea that she should laugh as well as cry and scream at the oh. end. Mm. Well, put that good there, call. And, Man, talk about sticking the landing. I mean, that was yeah. just yeah. sensational. That was a great yeah, that was way a perfect, picture. It was perfect. I mean, uh, to the ed, to the point of where you knew what was going on, but you still almost couldn't tell. For sure. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, I mean, oh, it almost cool. hurt to watch her because she was so broken at the end. Mm -hmm. Right. She. I tell you what. She wasn't broken in the middle picture when she bit off the pineal gland. Oh. <laughs> oh <ow. laughs> That hurt to watch, even though you yeah, know it's prosthetic. You know, yeah. this, there, he couldn't well, possibly be hurt by this, but it hurt to watch it. <laughs> I understand she was kind of like disgusted. She was like, do I really have to do this? 
And Stuart says, oh, just think of it kind of like it's a piece of like, I don't know, asparagus or something. But then <clears throat> Jeffrey didn't help because he said, it's a little red doggy dick. That's what it is. Yeah, because oh. I was thinking, I was actually going to say, I was like, it's very phallic. <laughs> it's it's very phallic. Yeah, yeah. we Not had any more later. later. <laughs> oh, ooh, lots and lots of phallic symbols. <laughs> There, yeah, I saw no phallic symbols. I don't know. It's just starting <laughs> with the resonator. <laughs> um, a giant. Okay. The resonator. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah, I heard that. We're too, gonna call man. it the vibrator, but everybody kept uh, giggling. The, uh, so. On the set, they were calling it the dog dick, and she just was not <laughs> digging, biting it. You know. <laughs> well, it probably helped her reaction. Yeah. Yeah. When he yeah. Yeah. when she bit it, you know. <laughs> she seemed repulsed, yeah. which was, she was disgusted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One would hope. <laughs> so oh, yeah. oh, back boy. to Pretorius. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm okay, I have to know something. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's <laughs> up with his hair? on his body he's a bon okay. jovi fan no oh, but why man. is it like hairy right here and then it's not hairy was that even was that fake was that all fake hair looks like no that looked, because, that looked too real to me that no looked, but something was wrong with no it's something was up because you, you're not just hairy on your shoulders well, and then you sometimes have no hair you are hair. you're not my brother-in-law my brother-in-law has a tuft of hair right here that like peaks when he buttons, buttons his shirt down it's got the you're like whoa what a man and he takes his shirt off and it's like there's just a head of hair sitting right there and nothing <laughs> around it really because yeah. uh, well he's not hairy there his shoulders, yeah, it was toughed up no. in the back, you know, See? his shoulders. That was yeah, his shoulders. so I think the things that bother well, us about moving. no, but remember, something happened, something happened to his shoulder, to it right after that. Oh, yeah, so that mm. could have all been fake. Oh, when they yes. grabbed, yeah, yeah. Grab and the fingers made furrows, and the yeah, oh, so, yeah. so that that all that hair could have been fake because that is not a hairy shoulder right there. That's Either they cool. shaved him, uh, I could. Or, I still love the bottom, you know, I, I think. Would have had to use I think weed given the amount of work that had to happen on the set mm -hmm. on a relatively lower budget movie with a relatively short shooting schedule, I really can't see them spending time putting this hairy Blue. chest on the man. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm sure that's the way he was. I've seen pictures yeah. of him. That's that's the real Ted. <laughs> wow. He's a but, teddy bear. But, but you want to know something interesting about Ted Sorrell is that he was actually his uncle was Jack Pierce. Oh, yes, really? really? Yes, yep. really. Who's that? Yeah. Okay, who's that? Makeup wow. guy. Jack oh, Pierce. okay. So the great you know, Jack Pierce. A little bit of a little bit of Wolfman in his lineage, and it's just in the chest. Wow. Maybe some yak fur. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That I, saw, awesome. I can see that you can sort of see the resemblance now that you said that. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Yeah. But you know what amazes me about okay, this wait, movie his, for such his, a low okay, budget look, I just uh, found movie one. that... Okay. Uh, no, look, his shoulders uh, are not going to say something, but Crystal's just going to say what she Okay, wants. Crystal's on Sorry. the track. <laughs> okay, Crystal, Crystal is on the track. The shoulders case. are not hairy. This is what bothers Crystal in like real life. <laughs> no, his chest is hairy right here, but Fraud! his shoulders... Your shoulders are not that hairy. Because, because did fish. you see it? Did you see did you see it? It's like it's like a cape. It's like it's like a it's like a little capelet of hair. It's like it's I'm like Robin holy moly. I saw it. I saw it. But no, he's not. There's so. also a snow shovel behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God he's not, because I was gonna cry for him. Well, oh. Ken Forey. Is sorry, for Ken sorry, Forey. There's no. no you're, he doesn't you're, have you're, any chest hair either. He doesn't have a chest anymore. Look at the poor guy. <laughs> Where's like Nick, Cage, Nick Cage when you need him? Bees! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I liked him in this. I, I He had just the right amount of... Uh... Yeah, I was sorry to see him go. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now, some people criticize the film in that he's playing a character you expect a, to be a black character, okay? He was a football player, and he's like the wisecracking sidekick which is a typical kind of a part that you might see for a black character. Also, his name is what? Bubba Brownlee. Bubba okay. Brownlee. Oh, geez. I didn't even realize. Bubba and there's the Brown and Brownlee. Oh. But, <laughs> you know, 
hey, if it was an it's HP, a cool, it's a cool name. If HP Lovecraft wrote the script, there wouldn't be a black person. He wouldn't in be it, black. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So wouldn't be any Bubba Brownleys. Well, no, no. It, I, the one thing I'll say though is he is the most grounded, and mm -hmm. well, I mean, like. <laughs> Like he is the most. Uh, what what am I trying to say? Yeah, the, the most, most common sense. Yes, like yeah, yeah. He, so. Sure. I, I mean, and at least there's that. He's, he's the most relatable person in the movie. Yeah, right. You know, because I'd be yeah, just like, like get the hell out. The yeah. Back on. No, <laughs> yeah, don't turn the machine back on. What are you like, crazy? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. really. Yeah. How about which, we go? Let's which they go. needed yes. because yeah. these other two characters are so obsessed. He was sort of the audience member. You know, the audience us as we watch it. Yeah, what are you turning man. that back on for? Yeah, yeah well, what part Jeff of this machine brings monsters don't we understand here? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, Jeffrey Combs' character did not want to be there, but he was there under mm. duress. He, he oh, had that's fair. Well, well, yeah. 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 He's a, he's kind of a innocent guy that just it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse, you know? Yeah. So exactly. that's what I guess part of the story that bothers me is why why is it that they have been exposed to this and yet they want to go but barbara reacted differently and was almost obsessive with it what that's not really explained i guess i'm just like oh, what oh why are they why, why were the characters able to resist the, the yeah why are they fine and she's of this thing? like i gotta do it again yeah <laughs> it doesn't make much sense to me and and i mean clearly we know that Jeffrey's character, his pineal gland is growing. I mean, mm. you know, we see it visually. Even I'm, I guess I'm just like, what? 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 What's, what's well? That she does trait explain. About? She does explain her personal reason for this, that her father had schizophrenia, and she yeah. thought that this could be an approach to curing schizophrenia, and that his father was locked away and turned into a vegetable and you know yeah. they did all kinds of awful things to him and she wants she doesn't want everyone else who has schizophrenia to go through with this she thinks yeah. this may be a, a, I don't, our way a route to a cure you're not buying yeah. it <laughs> no no because she's clearly getting off on it it's but a sexual true. thing for her okay that's okay well, so so i, I know like, like i get it like why she get, was initially going that way oh but, no i totally but, get why she'd go there but yeah, why but, did yeah. she get off on it when the other guys didn't? Well, or, or, I guess well, I just well, wanted more. Well, you know, I just wanted. Yeah, I felt like anyway. she was under yeah, the rationalized. influence of uh, Pretorius a little bit. I mean, I feel like the monsters were trying to get into our world, possibly through sex, by yes. turning the men into these rapist monsters and turning the woman into someone who'd be receptive to that. But Jeffrey didn't turn into the same thing as. Well, him, he fought though. it. He, he yeah. He, yeah. He tried. He started to and. Although he's sucking brains out of eyes, so he's not exactly fair enough. You know, well, <laughs> fair not enough. Complete innocent. Speaking of which, yes. Fair there enough. we go. Mm -hmm. Yum. That was that was so. Which awesome. that's really funny. <laughs> and look at the little the little gland is like up. <laughs> what is oh it? It's like, hey, oh, the, like hey. the way that thing whipped around. That had to be a oh yeah. Clients. I whip my gland back and forth. Whip my gland yes. back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looks so, so strange and and off putting. Mm -hmm in this yeah, makeup it it's just bizarre. it's just ugh, i love it <laughs> this is so nasty and and he had a great story to tell about that situation he was so horrible looking he was in makeup like this for 30 days out of a oh, like geez. eight week shoot or something so that's a long, long time wow yeah, and and he <clears throat> knew how vile he looked and so when it was time to break for lunch, he ate in his dressing room because he knew Aww. that he was going to Aww. disgust and looked at him, you know, and so he ate in his dressing room. And one day when he he's at lunch and eating his dressing room, he, he had to go to the bathroom. So he goes out in the hallway and unbeknownst to him, the same studio had a commercial shooting with little kids oh no adorable oh, little oh, kids oh, oh. in mushroom yeah. costumes and they were playing in the hallway when he comes out into the hallway and they start shrieking and crying and screaming and then <laughs> and those kids didn't. parents need to teach them some manners well and, yeah. and then <laughs> the parents the all these you know italian mothers start screaming at jeffrey in italian and he doesn't even know what they're saying but he can figure it out all he knew yeah. how to say himself was like 
excuse me. <laughs> so he just he just kind of you know went back into the into the the uh, the dressing room and uh, had to hold it. But oh. he felt really awful about what he subjected these little uh, these little kids in mushroom costumes to when they were just having a good time. Mushroom costumes. Oh, mushroom costumes. <laughs> I, I run tricking from mushroom costumes. So. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Little mushrooms running around is pretty yeah, scary. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I mean, way well, to I get think I read trippy. that this scene was cut originally, correct? Uh, okay. Well, yes and no. I mean, out. Okay. So I don't think, from my understanding, there is no shot that is completely absent that the sensor that he was that was cut specifically for the sensors at their request that shots were shortened a lot of times that that he went to the sensors like 12 times to finally get an r rating and each time he didn't eliminate shots he just made them shorter okay so okay. you so from from my understanding of what he has said, you saw all the shots. It's just they were a lot shorter in in the version that was on on the screen. But of course, now you get the unrated cut, and you can see all the that yeah, goodness. Right. Well, I'll have to I'll have to listen to that again because I I thought what he was saying was they were trying to restore it, and you know the studio said that's nah, all gone, and uh, huh. but it turns out the editor saved all the cuts. Okay. Yes, good for him. And, and it had literally, literally had a little canister that said cuts or trims or whatever. Uh, right. Yeah. So and and yeah, it took a lot of work because they were, those cuts were not in good shape, and even just figuring out how to assemble them, when all these, oh, and, yeah, oh right, right, these these shots have been cut up into little pieces, snip mm -hmm. up a little each time, a dozen yeah. times, for the MPAA board. Uh, so they had all these scratches, and you know, just just figuring out where the little pieces went was was. Oh, I'm trying to match the, the color but, and shading. But and the, the one thing that did get cut is something that Stewart himself cut before he even submitted it to the MPA rating board, and that is a scene where, um, where Doctor Pretorius is pounding a nail through the tongue of this this uh, girl all bound up in leather gear. And yeah. oh, I, wow. think, I think initially when, when uh, the, these, this group of people goes back to the house um, and they're, they're checking it out for the first time, that, that woman was actually supposed to be like strapped in and wearing that bondage gear and with the nail through her tongue. Um, but of course, Pretorius was gone. So, but, th oh. but that was that was cut out by Stuart, and he regretted that. That's the one thing he regretted. And after that, he vowed to never censor himself. You know, if the MP mm -hmm. board says this has to come out, that's another thing. But you know, he said, and he said yeah. in more recent years, he said, you know, now every other girl has a pierced tongue. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I, well, I had my tongue pierced. I don't uh -huh. anymore. I let it close up. But it would have been nothing to stick a nail through, like. Mm -hmm. I, but I did actually, I did actually get to see footage. I think it might have been in John Nolan's shop. Uh, ah. John Griswold did the mechanism for it, and you could see her. She had this prosthetic tongue, and you could see her tongue wriggling around, and you could see this this nail through it. You know. Wow. But wow. Well, um, so if it was nowadays, it'd be so much easier because they can really <laughs> yeah. just get someone that hey, had ears I mean, like me. So, you know, if you actually see him pounding it through, it might be off-putting to people. Wow. But you know, not something that people don't go through all the time these days. So this would have been early in the movie. I, I, mean, I kind of like the way it is now, where you get the sense that Pretorius is a bad guy, but you don't realize how bad until right. later in the movie when it comes out. So I'm sorry that he yeah. cut it against his will, but I think actually it's not a bad choice, just yeah, in terms probably, of revealing the character. Well, yeah, because when the, when you see the video of him doing that to her, it kind of seems consensual. It seems like she's. Mm -hmm. Enjoying it because they kiss. Well, who is it makes the comment stuff? that he? It's kind of weird. Lots of women up there, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Crawford, Crawford said that, yeah. or something like. Yeah, that. but but he tells them to scream too. Like 
Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people that like that, guys. You know, this is, and it's totally consensual. So I didn't think that it was not consensual in my mind until mm. you get into him being this yeah. character. I mean, it looked to me like they were just having fun. But it's a little hard to tell. I mean, he was certainly yeah. unconsensual with Barbara Crampton's character. Right. Right. Oh, after yeah, yeah. As soon as soon as as soon as he's the monster, it's obvious. But yeah. I'm saying in the video, it's not clear. It's right. because like he turns around and kisses her, and she's like, and he's like, scream, scream louder. And so I'm like, maybe he just gets off on women screaming. I don't know. Like, it's it's a tough one. Yeah. And so I do agree with Bill. I kind of like that you see that of him, but you're not sure. You're like, oh, I think that's consensual. And you don't know for sure until like you get into how he is becoming this creature and still kind of it leaves it open for interpretation like maybe he just still likes it and he's just gone off the deep end i don't know is he or isn't right. he i don't know i like that i like the ambiguity ambi he's pretty obviously a bad guy from the get-go because he's mean to jeffrey combs and oh, you know kind of arrogant and it's got so that we're all intelligent people like, um, Look at the uh, special yeah. effects. There's a ton of special effects people on this. And yeah, I okay. think, and looking to, uh, Ralph was so nice to uh, play an article from American Cinematographer on this from 1987 uh, that broke it down. And then, then I could see it when I looked at the, it, there was four main contributors. There was mechanical and makeup imageries, MMI, yeah. that was John, John Beekler. Right. Uh, and then uh, Mark Schostrom studio. Mark Schostrom, who did the, uh, who did uh, Pretorius, right? The, yeah, when you saw that freestanding Pretorius big monster with the big arm and everything, that so beautiful. And yeah, yeah, and, the, yeah. and the appliance work, the appliance work that you see there. And then mm -hmm. uh, John yeah, the Nolan, you bottom. mentioned for more than skin deep. Yeah, that was the company yeah. that was listed for him, and then Anthony Dublin. From Dublin EFX, yeah, uh, and so, then all of the people that worked with them and, and helped them and assisted, yeah, and and yeah. Ralph, you're listed for uh, animatronics, I believe, in the actual right. film crew. Yeah, so so each of the three creature shop crews had someone on anim animatronics, like Dave Kindlin for animatronics for um, for Mark Schostrom shop, and. Uh, John Criswell for John Nolan shop, and then I worked for uh, John Beekler. Um, mm. But, but it, so it was interesting. There were all these shops contributing, and it was a big movie that way, kind of a big little movie. It wasn't like a tremendous budget, but they got a lot of bang for their buck. And you know, yeah. it was one of these movies at the time in the late '80s where they would do that, have several shops contributing to a project. You know, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 was like that as well. There were like five shops working on that. Um, Evil Dead 2 had several different groups working on it. And in fact, Mark Schostrom, the reason he wasn't on the set in Italy, it was because he was working on Evil Dead and he was on that set. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Wow. Yeah. Ralph, in a, in, a, in a movie shoot like that where you have so many different shops working on yeah. different creatures, who's the person who makes sure that there's like an artistic cohesion that you know, one monster doesn't look completely unlike the others. You know, especially when we're showing a single person transforming from one to the other. So who's who is the overall person in charge of all that? Okay, uh, so we did have photographic reference, and sometimes there'd be a casting or something that you could refer to. Um, mm. Anthony Dublin was not only involved in physical effects on the set, like explosions and fire and water and slime and sparks, but he was also involved in optical effects and he was involved in coordinating the efforts of all the crews. So he was kind of in that position. Yeah. Um, and uh, also, of course, you know, Stuart Gordon could see in pictures the progress of what was happening. And I'm sure that he could, he could have some input, yeah. but, uh, you know, uh, special effects artists, creature effects artists are used to having to work to certain specifications. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there was some free reign up to a point in this one. But as you say, something is handed off from this point to this point. 
uh, you know, at, at this point, it, it goes between one shop shop and the other shop and it has to has to blend smoothly so it doesn't look like it's something different and mm -hmm. you know that's that's can be an issue but i think that uh i think it worked pretty smoothly in this case oh yeah and mm -hmm. you know I, I i think that it's partly because there was this anthony dublin character who was in charge of coordinating these efforts right. in addition to his other responsibilities yeah, and that's course, what I got. I kind of got that from the article. Once they got on the set, everybody kind of pitched in and helped each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I, I think I saw something in that article about so. Shilstrom did the, uh, you know, the monster Pretorius kind of, uh, but then another shop did the, which, which also included a uh, like a, a miniature or model, but another shop did the part where they molded onto uh, Ted Sorrell's face to make it look like he was coming out of the thing, you know, in, in a mm. couple of separate shots. But okay, right, I'm yeah. Not explaining so, that very well, but. Uh, so when you see, when, there was that big freestanding thing, which is kind yeah. of like midway through all the weird changes. That was Schostrom's shop. And the appliances, like when you first see his, half lumpy body like you've got in the bottom picture here that was mark choice from shop but then when we switched to a miniature of that creature that was something that john beekler's shop did and okay. you, had, you know you had um our our group working on that and so then that that transformation all the transformation effects were done with john beekler's shop but you know like you had um he had some very talented people who could make sure that they could make a miniature sculpture that looked very much like what the Showstrom shop had done. Yeah. That was probably one of the trickier things. Mark Showstrom did a lot of stuff around that time, didn't he? Between, it, I know he did Evil Dead too, and he did yeah. the, uh, the, the grandma in the basement mm -hmm. that came out and she changed mm -hmm. and her head, yeah, her head did that. That was an awesome <laughs> effect too. But uh, and that, that's, that's what I was going to say earlier, that for such a, a smaller budget movie, this looks way beyond effects wise what um, should have been. You know, I mean, you see some movies with two million dollar effects budgets and the effects are no they, nowhere near this. You can't touch what's what's in this movie. Right. Yeah, and at and that, I saw, I saw somewhere <laughs> mm -hmm. the effects budget was something like 150000 I don't know That's how accurate it. that is. Because that sounds kind of low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What a big part of the budget you would think the effects would be. So I'm not sure. Yeah. But one thing that's interesting is you can see clearly there's a lot of practical effects here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, shots that look like they're optical effects are not. Stuart Gordon came from the theater, and even though Reanimator was his first movie he directed, he had been directing stage productions for 15 years. He directed 35 different stage shows. So he was very comfortable working with actors, working in a physical space with props and sets and so on. But optical effects were something that he was a little bit hesitant about. He knew that if there was something that worked on the set, that it would work in the movie. And mm -hmm. so he was he was one who really tended that way, um, even though there were maybe other ways of doing things. And, and he even had it to the point where they were trying to do. If, well, like at the beginning, you see those those eels going through yeah, the air, yeah. and swimming through water. And yeah. those were actual puppets. And for some shots, what they tried to do is have an aquarium or a, a water tank with these puppets going through the water and reflect that at a 45 degree angle. So it was at a right oh. angle, what the yeah. camera was doing through the oh, glass. Yes. So you'd have a reflection of these things swimming around and you'd be seeing through the glass and see the actors and the set before you. And wow. it would wow. come in the camera. But of course, if they're swimming behind the resonator, there's a problem there because you don't want it to look like they're swimming in front of it. Right. So right. they would they would put a, a, a black sheet, a 
a, a little black piece of metal or something in the water that ah. the, the puppets could swim behind so that wow. it really looked like they were in that set swimming around even though they they were clearly transparent mm -hmm. problem is they figured that to do that for shot after shot after shot so much setup and so many times you have to cut these little pieces that have to be just perfect for a lot of the shots they ended up instead just rotoscoping out those parts of of the yeah. eels yeah. and behind right the, you know so they're hand hand animating mats out so that so that you don't see them going apparently in front of or on top of the yeah. resonator when they're supposed to be going behind it Mm -hmm. So much easier to do all that kind of stuff now with After Effects and everything. But back then, yeah. you really had to do some difficult <laughs> hands-on things. Well, and I saw yeah. something that said that Stuart Gordon realized uh, some of this and that he did a lot of storyboarding to help out the oh, yes. special effects people to, to yeah, know what the shot was going to look like. He was an artist, yeah. So he did he did storyboards to, to give people an idea of what was supposed to be happening. And that's, mm. that's really valuable. And an interesting thing is that the screenwriter, who was also one of the co-writers of the story for the movie, Dennis Paoli, was actually in New York. And and they didn't actually, they, they had a real simpatico because they were actually mm -hmm. friends since high school and they worked in theater productions together. And, you know, now that Stuart was working in movies on the West Coast, Dennis was in New York. And they would have to communicate through phone calls and through FedEx uh, packages when they were writing the script, uh, when he was writing the script and they were writing the story together. So it's kind of interesting. Hmm. They had this bond that went all the way back to high school, but they were separated by the miles. And unlike today, <laughs> they had to communicate just by phone calls and, and, and FedEx packages of the script. Oh, so, yeah. you know, you can yeah. imagine it's a little more well, difficult. Take, uh, take <laughs> look here before we run out of uh one of the things you worked on and we had this from when uh, mm. I, I didn't mount this or restrict the mm. size but uh that's sure. you working on the miniature of that uh what did you yes. guys call that the shrimp creature the yeah the shrimp, shrimp monster shrimp creature yeah. yeah um so that that was a sculpture by gino crocnali and um i did the mechanics for it and it was foam latex um, he had a little fiberglass uh, uh, interior, and uh, you saw, yeah, the, I have shots of the mechanism. You can see how it works, but mm -hmm. it had very, very spindly fingers, and it it had rods coming out and cables to control all the all the movements. Had a lot of movements Wings to it. And everything. Oh yeah, there we are. That's that was... that's the <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the full size <laughs> version. Yeah, and. Um, Gino Cragnali, who did the miniature, is the guy on the right making the best face of the three of us. <laughs> and um, and that's Bill Forsh and I working on on the body okay. there. Um, <laughs> it was in wet clay, and as I said in wow. the 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 show uh, where you profiled my career, um, it had a flimsy wooden frame that you can sort of see in this picture, and it wasn't mm -hmm. sufficient to hold up all that wet clay. And That's so, a lot of clay. yeah, at a certain point, it, the the base collapsed, and we we barely kept uh, kept it from slamming and flattening on the floor and oh, crushing wow. the process. But uh, <laughs> it was it was interesting. Yeah, there you go. Like you know, design. That head is awesome. Mm. It is. Wild. It is it's really wild. It's like a cross between a brain and an insect, and I don't know what. Mm -hmm. And there were little bladders inside the head so the, the brain could pulse. Oh, neat. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you had, uh, <laughs> this is. <laughs> this just makes me laugh because you look so forlorn. Ralph pondering. <laughs> yeah. This, this isn't pondering right here. For <laughs> it's coming for you. Not pondering there. Yeah. So here's, here's some of the. Uh, yeah, the hand controls. Yeah. And you can see there are little channels in front of the finger rings. That's because when you work with cables, the cables will stretch over time. And this way, oh. you can move the housings of the cables back and forth 
as as they stretch so that you always have the rings where you want them instead of you know oh wow that's cool cable yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um i don't um the creature in the basement the worm with the big oh yeah yes that that looked that alone looked like it was a hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars but it that was the, that's oh. one of the most astounding i mean it's huge yeah that was guys are jumping around. That, that was a <laughs> yeah. that was an awesome effect too so that was an awesome creature that was john nolan's shop that did that and john criswell did the mechanics for it john criswell has since really gone on to great heights he has worked on not only lots of films, but he is now the head animatronic designer at Henson uh, oh, wow. in oh, wow. London. So like all those mechanics that they did for Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, he mm. was in charge of that project. I'm so glad they're, I mean, I'm so sad oh. they're not making another season of that. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, that was a big one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, so that was, it. That was impressive. Yeah, well, there was something to do with that too, where uh, it got waterlogged and it, they almost, it was way too heavy to actually get it to rear up like it was supposed mm -hmm. to. Yeah, like a, exactly. That's, that's going to happen. You have something that's made of foam and it's just a gigantic sponge. sponge yeah. <laughs> What's oh, going to yeah. happen? You know, they, well, any, they, any one of the monsters in here could have been its own creature and its own move. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. It, but it here's some more controls that you were working on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So these are these are joysticks. One is for the neck movement, and the other is for the tail movement. So, you know, wow. as you as you expect, those four cables are controlling four cables inside the neck and four cables inside of the tail. Going fishing. Yeah. <laughs> so, how many the, people did it take to operate that? Mm, let's see. There would be. The two hand controls, these hand controls, and then um, someone was pumping the air. That's, let's see, one, two. Oh, that's, yeah. Mm. You know, probably about half a dozen people. Yeah. So here you can see, like, there's, there's a cable that runs across between the two mandibles, and then they attach to a single cable. That single cable, when pulled, will make those mandible close. Mm -hmm. And then to make it go the other way, there's elastic to uh, uh, cables that go to this kind of a sort of a pulley. Um, and that's that's what keeps them open unless you're pulling on it. That, that way, since it has a return spring sort of action, you just have to have one cable to pull and then it automatically um, retracts by using the elastic in that case. So what are the, the discs that sort of make up the, the neck vertebrae, I guess? What are those oh, yeah. made of? Oh, those are just uh, sheet plastic, I think styrene. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see, you can also see springs. There were springs that uh, are for hinging the jaw. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's the, oh, yikes. I love the skin, hairy chest, skin texture is just so cool. See, the chest is fine, but look at that shoulder. It's, it's clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Mitch Devane is, is the one who's really a genius at the human form. So the, the body here that you see, um, that, that human body part was Mitch Devane's work. And then he, he helped Gino with, with the rest of it. Okay. Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah, so this this one it was supposed to look kind of like he had tumors all over his body, yeah. and um, yeah. when you saw the the bub the the bumps all over the body, and and the appliance and Ted Sorrell's uh, face, um, they called him Mister Bubbles. Hmm. <laughs> the the, the way like, the uh, way it was lit, you couldn't really tell. Um, those were tumors or like tumors. They, everything looked red, I think. Yeah, so wasn't there happened. the shot at the bottom? I seem to remember. Yeah, I don't know if I read it or if you talked about it that they had a bunch of uh, like erotic figures carved on oh, the back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was actually um, it was it was that that look, but it was the miniature of that. Okay. When, okay. when Mitch Devane uh, sculpted it, 
you don't really see the back in detail. So Mitch Devane sculpted in all these, not just bumps, but he sculpted penises and vagina, <laughs> you know, sexual wow. activity going on on the backside of it. But uh, it wasn't really just featured. So the crew could get a, get a laugh. Is that... <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Easter eggs. <laughs> I think. But, yeah, there you see. Hand puppet. The head. Ooh. I like those mandibles. It's cool. I love looking at that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're fun. Well, we're, we're <laughs> I hate to say this, but we're kind of running out of time. Out of time. Uh, oh, yeah. We could we could go on and on and on. I did read about how they yeah. used some ungodly amount of methyl cellulose. As it was, <laughs> methyl it was cellulose actually, all that water nice. coming down the stairs was supposed to be like the goo, and it was too, I don't know if it was too thin or too what gooey. It was. Yeah. Ralph, is uh, it true that they use methyl cellulose in Twinkies? <laughs> that, yes. That's that maybe they, that's I, I would I would believe that. Well, in uh, I, know, I know it's yeah. used in milkshakes. I know it's milkshakes all the time. Yeah, soups, dressings, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah, <laughs> thickener. I, I just heard the, the the filling in a Twinkie was made from it. Yeah. It's the Jello and Jello wrestling. Right. It's a lot easier to use methyl cellulose. <laughs> I, I did want to <laughs> I did want to mention one scene that I thought was great when we cut from Bubba vomiting in that one scene to then. An egg white coming out of an egg as they're cooking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I love cuts like that. Yeah. No, wow. really very, cool. very slowly and as, <laughs> to make it as form. creepy and gooey as it could. Well, yeah. and we, did, we didn't even mention that, uh, you know, one of the characters' name is Dr. Block after Robert That's Block. True. Right. Who was and... actually, who actually was uh, corresponded with H.P. Lovecraft. They actually wow. did. Really? Oh, Dr. or Robert Block. Yeah, yeah. Robert Block. The, yeah, 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 author of Psycho. yeah. No, he wrote a bunch of uh, his his early writing career was uh, a lot of Cthulhu mythos stuff for the yeah. Bolts. Was Pretorius uh, a nod to Bride of Frankenstein? Yeah, absolutely, of course. yeah. There was Pretorius yeah. in in the story. Well, in fact, <laughs> so I I found this quote, and it was actually it was in that article where Stuart Gordon said, "There's a definite connection between horror movies and sex." And we felt that we wanted to explore that a little bit more in our film. The character of Dr. Pretorius in From Beyond, homage to the mad scientist in Bride of Frankenstein, mm. is very much a modern Marquis de Sade. And the idea yeah. is that once yeah. he transforms, he is very pleased with the change rather than horrified. Mm. I like monsters that enjoy being monsters. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense when some of these we look at some of these films. Yeah, yeah, and, and Stuart Gordon was not shy about sexual situations or nudity in his films, as mm -hmm. as you can tell just oh, by yeah. Reanimator and From Beyond. Um, yeah, he saw he saw you know the horror of monsters and the and and sex as being two sides of the same coin. Essentially, one is death and one is life, mm -hmm. and. There are some connections between the pineal gland and sex hormones being released by the pituitary. The, the pineal has some involvement in regulating the release of some of the sex hormones. Hmm. Mostly, mostly the pineal isn't, uh, oh, there I go. I'm calling it pineal. But I understand even though everyone in the movie calls it pineal, it's either pineal or pineal. And it's called pineal because of its resemblance to a little pine cone. But the real pineal, in our opinion, <laughs> pineal is, is, is actually quite small. It's about the size of a lima bean. And it actually sits in the center, but back in the skull quite a ways. So for it to grow to the extent it does in this movie is quite extraordinary. Well, you need a resonator for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Let's crank that up and have a party, right? <laughs> So yeah. uh, another quick comment, in, uh, and I think you sent me this. Uh, in 2021, a miniseries was directed and written by William Butler titled The Resonator, Miskatonic U, uh, <laughs> was released to uh, the Full Moon Features app and Amazon Prime Video, and apparently it's available on Blu-ray. Oh. 
and it's Pluto. It's on Tubi as well. It's on Tubi. It's on, it's on Tubi. Tubi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, the ma the making of it is on Tubi. Yes, oh, yes, oh, yeah. Cool. And and cool. the writer and director of that film uh, is Bill Butler, who was on our set crew. He he and Mike Deke were John Beekler's set crew for mm -hmm. From Beyond. So he's he's keeping it going after all these years. Um, well, I'm. I'm sure there's so much more we can say about this. Um, any oh, final yeah. comments from anybody? Uh, I'll let Ralph go first. Well, there are, there are a, couple, a couple more funny things. Um, Stuart Gordon uh, is actually someone who is afraid of scary movies himself, if they're not movies that he's made. When he was a kid, he and his little brother snuck into the Tingler, and he was actually uh -huh. on one of the Percepto seats where there was a buzzer, and oh, he went wow. he went running out of the theater, leaving his little brother behind. He also said that, that he also said that when he watched Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, there's this scene where Michael Madsen is about to cut someone's ear off, and mm -hmm. just at that point, the film broke, and oh. he went running to the bathroom, and who was uh -huh. next at the next urinal but Wes Craven. And Wes Craven oh, thought, I'm not wow. going back in there. And, and <laughs> to which Stuart Gordon says, but, but Wes, it's only a movie, right? Because that, that was the tagline That's for right. Last House on the Left that Wes Craven did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Said, No, it was too real. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. He even said that uh, viewing a, a movie at a drive-in, he almost caused a car wreck trying to drive out of the place when it just got too intense for him. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so having fears actually is something that he's, he's used for his art because he understands what it's like to be afraid. He understands, therefore, yeah. how to push people's buttons and how to be effective as a, as a horror filmmaker. Um, I understand that the Italian crews were not in the habit of being quiet yeah. when people were shooting yes. movies because back <laughs> in the day, that. they would... They would they would dub everything over. They would just loop it afterward. Oh, yeah. mm. And and so there's this one guy who was hammering. You know, he he told other people, "Be quiet, we're shooting." But this one guy just kept hammering, hammering away. And he said, "You have to be quiet. We're shooting." And the guy said, "Hey, when Fellini was shooting here, when I worked for Fellini, we didn't have to be quiet. We could keep hammering." And and so Stewart says, "Well, I'm not Fellini." And so the guy says. You can say that again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. It was pretty funny that they uh, <laughs> apparently they dubbed everything. So when you said sure. action, it didn't mean be quiet or anything. No. Yeah, he said it meant talk about what you were doing last night. That's what he meant. <laughs> and and um, he also said that Italians didn't really have a word that directly corresponds to the word beyond. So they'd ask him. This movie from the behind. What's this about? This oh my movie. god! <laughs> from behind. Different genre. Yeah. I yeah, just had trouble understanding yeah, yeah. that. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is I appreciate that David Zen Mansley, who made the Resonator, um, made it in a very interesting way. That those forks that you saw and and the big cylinders, they look like they're made of solid metal, solid chrome, but in fact they're made of clear acrylic oh. and so they're clear plastic but then they were wrapped in chrome mylar so mm -hmm. that you could have light glowing from the inside when you wanted it to be glowing as opposed to using an optical effect or something like that so you could oh, have wow. it lit on the outside with no lights inside and it looked like solid metal but when they wanted it to start glowing and and you know activating then they could have these lights on the inside and then it had this glowing appearance to it, which I thought was, was quite an yeah. ingenious. It was an impressive uh, uh, piece of machinery. He went to a lot of effort on that thing. He, uh, I think he it said he saw Reanimator and then contacted Stuart Gordon and said he wanted to move work on his next movie. And then he went and talked to scientists and all kinds of people to try to make this as realistic as it as it could be. Um, in terms of science, with tuning forks and the, uh, I don't know, the, the big globe thing was pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's quite a Any, quite a piece. Anybody else? Oh, if you haven't uh, seen it, go see it. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, oh yeah. 
I can't imagine yeah. there's a horror fan out there at this point that has not seen it. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I have friends who haven't seen it, which surprises me. Kids today, yeah. yeah. No. That's great. Yeah. That's it great. gets real yeah. gnarly, though. You saw some of those pictures, man. It, it does, especially it's especially the brain-eating. I don't know why, but the brain-eating really <laughs> got me. Yeah. Which, of course, I go to that. Crawford, what brain are you doing? Eating or what he's... <laughs> It, no, when he's going, oh, oh. it's delicious, and he keeps yeah. going on. And on, and on. I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I, I think when you have something like that, and Stuart has said this, you know, you've got these fantastical situations. Having good acting, you know, having having a solid script right. and and actors who really make you believe, it's it's all the more important, right? You know, and and so glad we have a wonder that I can read for Portland because without that, there there would be no grounding. It's like everybody's crazy, and mm -hmm. it's like you, you'd have trouble yeah. relating. But but that that brought it, you know, down to earth. So mm -hmm. that was that was a good choice. Yeah. Um, the steward having right. coming from the theater liked to use people who were theater people, so that yeah. paid off, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, I, I we got to cut it off there, oh. folks. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, and we yeah, have a yeah. ton of feedback, but we don't have time to do that either. So we'll <laughs> bring that back uh, in another episode. But we do want to announce uh, oh, yeah. we did a poll for episode 200. What is it? What uh, is from it? listeners. You're going to you're gonna be happy. Is it Night of the Comet poll. then? Yes. Yay! I knew it. <laughs> oh, See? nice one. The polls yeah. appeared on our Facebook page, on YouTube, and uh, for Patreon members. See, I knew and, that was. Uh, Night of the Comet was the clear right. winner. Altered States, Scanners, and Sleepaway Camp oh, yeah. were tied for second, and Cat People uh, was uh, fifth. But, hey, we it's can beautiful. do. It's beautiful. It's more obvious. We'll get to all of them. Like, though. I, mm -hmm. think, I think we will probably do all of them. And we had a lot of people piping in on some other films that we also discussed oh. when we made the list so they're coming we just can't do all the best ones first yeah yeah i'm so excited so anyway night of the, the comet the for episode two i own that right. one so i don't have to even worry yeah. about that i did the crystal cleveland want, story i did want to mention <laughs> yeah. quickly uh the interview we did with man time flies the interview we did with ralph was episode 155 oh yeah which was uh released back in uh May of 2020. Wow. And uh, like, yeah. this is actually another double tap. It was done by a, a different crew for 80s on episode 129 from beyond. So check that out too and see what, what they had to say about it. Um, other than that, I'm fired up for Night of the Comet episode yeah. 200. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. That's yeah, oh, my wife's really oh, happy to so watch much. Thanks, and, Ralph. And, and, yeah, and thanks, I Ralph. Remember, the director of Evil Swan is Ken Hall. Ken Hall. <laughs> Ken oh, God. Oh, we'll okay. See. Better late than never. <laughs> I've, heard, I've forgotten names all the time. It's like. Um, <laughs> all right. So that's why we have to write them down in the little yeah, corner. Yeah, I there. usually that's do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be you sure and like, subscribe, comment. We love comments. We love comments. We're starting to get more comments. And I feel bad we didn't have time for these, but uh, we will Next get time. to them. Yeah. Um, so, hey, catch us again in. Oh, and I think I thank Ralph. Thank you, Ralph, so much. I really appreciate yes, thank you, Ralph. You bring here. Yeah, it was a great pleasure here. being here. Uh, <laughs> Ralph's part of the family now. We, that's uh, right. Uh, I don't know whether I'm he likes it or not. Right, but I think this might be episode five, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's Just right. This is the fifth time I've been on and, uh, uh, the of man. one or the other. Yes. All righty. Yep. Well, thank yes. you. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s, as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>